shown you to set up and I'm using the stiff link pop-up and I think it's worth mentioning that is the way that I use it in all circumstances a lot of people will suggest that you use a flexible uh, boom section to override things on the bottom no I don't do that at all the way I override the debris on the bottom is to move the hook link sinkers up uh, and the bead a little bit further up and that means the boom can just rest on top of anything and I've never had a problem with it at all not that I know of of course uh, I can't see it for a carp size but we'll go through the way that I set it up and um, the first thing to look at uh, is the hook end of the setup and uh, I use 99.99 recurring times out of 100 the short uh, chod rigs uh, they come free uh, on a spool and uh, yeah they're, they're ready uh, to rock and roll which is wonderful saves me so much time uh, uh, tying up rigs and what I do is take a few of them off the spool as you see in my rig box here uh, I curve them round and I'll show you that again in a minute um, and pin them into so they're ready to go I haven't got to start messing around with a spool or anything so the first thing I'm going to do <coughs> is take one of them off if I can find the pin it's there You'll see I've, I've stored it. Once I take it off of that um, <clears throat> off of that spool, I don't want to lose that curve. Um, it's difficult to, to put the curve in, and, and it's more difficult to get rid of it. But all I do is give it a little pull like that, and it'll straighten it out to whatever I want it to be. And you can bend it back round a little bit and make it that little bit more aggressive if you want to, and set it up exactly how you want. I leave the little swivel on the ring. Uh, it just lessens the amount of putty I've got to put on to uh, to get the, the whole thing to sink. And uh, the way I use my pop-ups, they're probably far more aggressive the, than just a pop-up on its own. So that's the first thing I do. Take that off uh, and get the rest of it ready. The boom section itself then, 30 pound, illusion um, stiff link material uh, it can be used as a leader if necessary in very very severe places I've never used it as such but for me it makes the ideal boom section for my stiff link pop-ups first thing I do is strip about eight or nine inches of it off first thing I do just to make it easier to work with is just to try and get some of that curl out of it I'll get rid of it all eventually but just in the initial stages and as much as there's so many wonderful knots around uh, I've never had a problem with blood knots and that is the knot excuse me I need to put my uh, my glass is down and it's such thick material all you need to do is tie a free turn very basic oops blood knot you'll have to excuse me my powers of perception uh, with one eye when I'm messing around with rigs is terrible but we get there in the end right and what I do is push the swivel out the way and I'm just going to trim the end off I push the swivel out the way because it gets the knot out of the way the last thing I want to do is damage it with uh, with the lighter I might not want to damage the knot, but I'd probably damage my fingers more with the lighter, I must admit. I hope this brand new safe westerly wind, it didn't, uh, makes the lighter work, thank goodness for that. And that's it. And that, for now, is that end of the rig complete. We'll go up the other end. <coughs> we need flexi ring swivel so I'll just get out the packet 
maybe I should have been a bit more Blue Peter orientated and had one out of there already, but uh, don't want to be too organised. Now, the flexi ring, the big ring side of it is what is going to run on my main line. If you put the small side on, there's more chance of clag and stuff getting caught up in it if your main line does break and impede the carp getting rid of the lead. So the big one is tied on the main line and to give you that mobility at that end of the hook link, I tie on through the small ring on the flexi ring swivel. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about wonderful knots that keep things straight and everything. All I do is a little overhand knot. Now, I know we want things to look all prim and proper and tidy, but as long as these knots are pro tied correctly, you will not have any problems. Dampness, give it a good pull. Trim off the long end. Keep it there and throw it in the bin, of course. And that basically is the rig. Now, the first thing you'll notice is how bendy the um, the boom section is. And whilst I'm not overly fussed how bendy it is, there aren't many absolutely perfectly straight lines in nature. And if carp, if people think carp can suss out something, then why use a straight line? But anyway, that's a, another argument. I like to straighten it out anyway. And what I do is... Oops, sorry. Put that through the loop in the nylon, put the shorter end through the swivel, the, the big ring on the swivel. Make sure that any knots or swivels are out of the way, not pressing on the line. And all you're got to, gonna do is extend it quite rapidly. I, I normally do it 31 times and hope that that will make sure I catch a carp that's over 31 pounds. It rarely works, to be honest with you, but I'm happy doing it. And all you do is go one, two, three, four, and you just keep doing it. And what that obviously does is, I mean, it's settling your knots down, but it's moving the material very quickly and it warms it up. And all you do is hold it for another 15, 20 seconds or so in that position. Uh, it allows those molecules to, talk, to cool down and end up in the way that you want it to be, which is pretty straight. Well, a lot straighter than it was when it came out of the packet. And all that will lie down on the bottom anyway, and it won't really matter. Uh, <coughs> the loop at the top of the swivel, I just think it gives the hook bait that sort of half a degree you know uh, another little dimension uh <coughs> to move vertically across the bottom which makes it you know just that much more difficult for a carp to deal with i haven't done that very well to be honest with you but uh it does work next thing to do i can find it i'll grab a little putty I always put a little bit more, it's a, a good bit of advice, I think. Put a little more on than you think you'll need because it's easier to pick it off than it is to, um, to attach more to it. I haven't picked enough out of there, to be honest with you, so I'll have to get a little bit more. <coughs> Yeah, the last thing you want to be do is, uh, especially if you're in a bit of a hurry to replace a hook bait, is be adding little bits, especially in the middle of the night. It can get very, very frustrating. And there is the the, the basic rig. Uh, it hasn't got a hook bait on. We'll just do that in a second. But uh, before you do attach that hook bait, just check all your knots. Make sure everything's bedded down. You make sure that 
putt is on correctly. We're good to go with the up bait. What I'm going to do is a cork dust pop ups. The magical old cell. And what I do is I take the braid out of uh, any strippable uh, Camatex braid that I use. When I get rid of the hook link, I cut the hook and the, the swivel off, and I use that to um, to attach my pop-ups to the rig. First up, and this is probably the worst one for me to do, wet the braid so it goes through into the little swivel like that. Stretch that out. Get your hook back ready. I always keep a couple of bits of plastic or a, a, a mainline topper on there. To load onto the hook link. Uh, onto the <coughs> braid. Ooh. I probably don't find them rigs too interesting simply because I've got ten Cumberland sausages for fingers. Just push it down so you cover the swivel apart from the uh, the, the bottom one, the bottom ring, pull the rest of the braid through. Again, there's going to be a bit of waste. It's always do it on the top of your tackle box so you can bin the stuff in your rubbish bag. <coughs> and again, I hope the wind isn't going to get in the way. That's it there. That's about how much I leave. Some braids burn better than others, but uh, most of them will just burn down you flatten it out and there is my hook bait and rig complete. It, uh, it just works everywhere that I go and people, I don't know, I don't know what people think and uh, the way they think about rigs. I think sometimes it gets over complicated. The reason that I use this rig is because it avoids tangles. Uh, and it hooks carp very, very well indeed. And uh, yeah, and I think the way that I set it up gives it a little bit more freedom with a big loop at the end there uh, and just allows that to run along the bottom. And it's brilliant. Uh, and there's a lake just over the road from here that I fished a few years back and I used to uh, use my bottom bait rigs and people said that was the way to do it. Uh, and, I, and when they said that, it, it almost as if it became fashionable when I caught a few. So I uh, I changed to these, and uh, th it wouldn't change anything. The, the the action kept on going, and that's happened on just about every lake that I fished. I love it. I've got confidence in it, and that is the biggest thing I'll try to sort of say to people: is get confidence in something, make it up the way that you want it to be made, um, and and once you've caught a few fish on it, it's something you can stick with forever. You ain't got to tie up the latest wonder rig. Uh, some of them are very, very uh, shady adaptations of some very successful rigs in the past, and uh, you know sometimes when somebody changes and says it's brilliant, it's no need to uh, have a look at it for sure but uh concentrate on the things that give you the confidence and you will catch more carp